CBS Television Sports presents the National Football Conference Playoffs. Today, the Washington Redskins meet the Minnesota Vikings. Sponsored by Ford and your Ford dealer. The closer you look, the better we look. And by the Miller Brewing Company. Brewers of Miller Highlight. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. And by the Savings and Loan Foundation on behalf of your nearby Savings and Loan Association. They want you to know how money works. And by Holiday Inn, the most accommodating people in the world. Welcome to Metropolitan Stadium in Bloomington, Minnesota for the NFC Divisional Playoff Contest between the Washington Redskins and the Minnesota Vikings. I'm Bruce Roberts. We're having a veritable heat wave here. It's 24 degrees above. As far as the field is concerned, it's been covered with a tarp both this week and last. It's in fairly decent shape. Now let's join the gentlemen who will be describing today's action. Wayne Walker, Tommy Mason, and Jack Whitaker. Jack? Thank you, Bruce. And yesterday at his press conference, Coach Bud Grant of the Vikings said that he thought the Vikings and the Redskins were two very similar teams. Wayne, do you subscribe to that? That's exactly right. Not only do they match up really well physically, but uh, really their philosophy is the same. They live with their defense. Uh, they play conservative offense and uh, hope that their defense can force mistakes. And I think one point to really keep in mind today, everybody talks about the great Minnesota rush. They've gotten to the passer 30 times this season, but the Redskins have got to the passer 53 times. And Maybe one other little thing. The Washington uh, quarterbacks, both uh, Billy Kilmer and Jurgensen, are a little bit gimpy, and they could have some trouble today avoiding that strong Minnesota rush, whereas we know Fran Tarkin can, can move around back uh -huh. there. How about offensively there, Tommy Mason? Jack, I think in order for the Redskins to succeed in this game and come out on top, they're going to have to establish their running game. Their whole offense is predicated on the running game. The passing game evolves off of that, and uh, it's been a little sporadic this year, and they haven't really got it going real well. But if they can do it today, then I think it's going to be a a good day. But both clubs you feel are going to wait for the other fellow to make the mistake, right? I'll tell you what, we could still be here Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> <defensive games. laughs> All right, we'll be back with the start of today's game in just a moment. There are killers on the loose, dressed like cops, and they always use a magnet. There's only one cop around who can crack this case. They call him Dirty Harry. In 24 hours, Harry stops a robbery, covers a stake in, and prevents a hijack. Clint Eastwood is back, and this time his world is dirtier than ever. Magnum Force, rated R. Opening Christmas Day at selected theaters around the country. This is fiberglass insulation. John's Manville makes it. You know what it's worth to you? About $13 a month. That's how much money the right home insulation can save you in fuel. That's a lot of fuel. And with today's energy problems, that's more important than ever. Only problem is our story just keeps getting covered up. John's Manville, a good name. That's a little hard to find. Freedom. Financial freedom. Freedom to live the way you want. Freedom to educate your children the way you want. Freedom to retire the way you want. Financial freedom, it doesn't come easy. But you don't have to go it alone. Merrill Lynch has 29 ways to help you fight for it. Merrill Lynch wants to help you fight for your financial freedom. The Redskins have just been introduced here at Metropolitan Stadium as the rest of the squad comes on the field. There's the starting offensive lineup. They've won the toss and will receive. And in a moment, you'll hear a tremendous roar as the Purple People come out. Here it is.
right, the Minnesota Vikings against the Washington Redskins. The Vikings, of course, have been in the playoffs before. They missed last year with a 7-7 seven and seven record. And an interesting thing that Bud Grant brought out yesterday, I thought, ladies and gentlemen, was uh, five of those games they lost by 13 points. Bud Grant said that uh, just one more good play yep. in any one of those five yep. games would have turned their record completely around, and he is right because uh, I can think of two or three that uh, were lost by last second field goals by Fred Cox. George Allen, of course, who brings his team in here for the third year in a row into the playoffs. The wild card selection. Billy Kilmer will be the starting quarterback. He has been in the hospital this week with an intestinal disorder, but he is starting. Jurgensen, we understand, can play if he has to. Jack, I was talking to Billy before the game, and uh, he feels very good. I think he's lost about 10 pounds as a result of the intravenous feeding, so he couldn't have any solid food while he was in the uh, hospital. But uh, he's a competitor, and he's up for the game, and I think it's going to be a good day, and it's always nice to have somebody like Sonny Jurgensen as a uh, backup, if you will. Jurgensen said he was going to loan Billy 12 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> he can afford it. He can afford it. it huh? <laughs> there are the officials, Jim Tunney, Pat Harder, Ray Sonnenberg, Gene Barth, Don Wedge, and Dick Dolak. Now our national anthem here today will be sung by <coughs> Adeline Falstead. The band is the Viking Band, directed by Ralph Mendenhall. Ladies and gentlemen, the Viking Band, under the direction of Ralph Mendenhall, will play our national anthem, and Adeline Falstead will lead us in the singing. Let's all join in. And again, the weather almost perfect here on this first day of winter. It's our spring day up here in America, Scandinavia. About 25 degrees and no wind. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. It's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the National Football League is prohibited. Fran Tarkenton. Now, Fred Cox, I understand, uh, does some nice things on a kickoff. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if he tries to keep the ball away from number 28, Herb Mulkey, who uh, is the second-leading kickoff returner in the National Football League. And uh, Freddie will squib that ball a lot, and it'll end up in the corner. So let's see what he does with this opener. Well, Mulkey will take it right at the goal line. Back behind the wedge and getting to the 24-25 yard line. And the ball game underway. NFC playoff Atlanta, or uh, Washington here against Minnesota. At the 25, the Redskins start. Marshall Page, Larson, and Eller the front four. Winston, Seaman, and Hilgenberg at linebackers as Kilmer brings them out. Haraway and Brown the back. ball and drives it up to the 29 yard line. It'll be second down and six. As we watch the Minnesota defense spread out. Bryant and Wright are at the corners. Paul Krause and Jeff Wright at safety. Second and six. 
Jefferson in motion. Larry Brown for the first down as he gets across the 35 to the 36. You know, the Redskins have a fine pair of running backs with Brown and Haraway here. You see Charlie Haraway leading and making a nice block on the Hilgenberg, the linebacker. Larry pops right on through, and you can see the power behind him. You know, he only weighs about 195 pounds, Jack, but he's one of the strongest 195 pounders I've ever seen. That was against that right defensive side, Marshall and Hilgenberg on that one, and it's a first down for the Redskins. Kilmer. Larry Brown, but this time, Mr. Carl Eller says, no way. Oh, what, a, what a big job that that uh, number 81 Carl Eller did on that play. Now, he's playing against George Stark, a first-year man from Columbia, and he really manhandled him on this play. Watch him get rid of 74 and really take on Larry Brown. I think this is one of the things they're going to have to prevent the Wayne during the game is the breakdowns in the offensive line. And you're right, George is a rookie and uh, matched against somebody like Carl. He's got his work cut out for him today. Second and 11 from the 35. Callaway. <laughs> That's it, maybe three yards on the play to the 38. Page 88 and Larson. And Larson goes out on a third and long. And Bob Lurtz from number 75 enters the game for the Vikings. Uh, they like to get him in here on these long yardage situations. They feel that he's a little bit better pass rusher than Gary Larson, number 77. So perhaps the first pass of the game. Taylor to the right, Jefferson to the left on third and seven from the Washington 38. No. Larry Brown. Good pursuit, however, by the Minnesota Vikings, and Washington will have to punt. Lertzema at number 60, Roy Winston. Great play by Ella on that last one, Jack. He actually looks like he, looked like he was blocked, and when Larry got through the hole and cut to the outside, well, Carl pursued, and he was in on the tackle. Bobby Bryant. Deep for the Vikings. Mike Bragg will kick for Washington. Looks like Minnesota may put the heat on a 10-man rush, just one man back in the safety position. Six. Good high punt. Brian, fair catch inside the 15. The 13-yard line. The Vikings have the football. Well, the Viking defense stops Washington on the first series. No score with 11.29 left here in the first period. Lee and Foreman are the backs. Merrill Dale in motion. A fake pass out to Reed. Down the sidelines, out of bounds at the 21. Jack, I think we're going to have a real interesting matchup today with the Viking offense and the Redskin defense. Francis has always used his backs an awful lot in the patterns. And I think in Chris Hanberger and Dave Robinson on the outside for the Redskins, you have two of the better linebackers in the league. I don't know of anybody that's more mobile than Hanberger, and everybody in this area knows of Robinson's uh, career prior to this year with the Green Bay Packers. So it's going to be interesting to see what he does to get them. Second down and three. At the 20. Again, Dale in motion. Foreman. Across the 20, short of the first down at about the 22, I think. The Biggs, Talbert, Brundage, and McDowell in that front four. Washington uh, twice now uh, have lined up in an odd man line with the man over the center. The first time they, they switched back to 4-3 right at the last. That time they stayed in it. With the man over the center, Mick Tinglehoff, they hope to get a mismatch there. Tinglehoff only weighing 232, 35 pounds. And uh, they're doing that to shut down the Minnesota running game in the middle, and it worked that time. Third and one. Back 
back and ten. On third and one to Killiam, who's out there and can't pull it. Whoa, shades of Bart Starr on third and one and gone long, huh? I tell you, Francis pulled it out of the hat, and he had it. You know, it was too bad. I think Gilliam, Gilliam kind of lost it over his shoulder. We'll get a chance to watch it here. You see him coming in like he's going to block, and this makes the defensive backs think that he's coming in to crack back, and you see Pat Fisher chasing him there. At this point, he's got to try to watch the ball and veer and adjust to the ball and isn't able to do it. You know, those are the opportunities you hate to miss. Petey Duncan for Washington. I shied the punt on fourth and one. Return ball. Yes, sir. At the 35, Duncan goes down at the 36 and finally put down up about the 39-yard line. A low spiral. But Speedy Duncan lost his footing. Jack, the reason I say re return ball is I think everybody was a very low kick and everybody uh, can't cover that one very well. Well, with 10 minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the first quarter, there's timeout with the score Washington nothing, Minnesota nothing. This Goodyear Custom Steel Guard radial tire uses less gas than non-radial tires, but that's not all. Steel Guard also has these five guards to help protect you five ways. Flexible polyester cord, double steel belts, computer designed tread to hold in the wet, cornering grooves, steel sidewall stabilizers. All these five guards and saves gas too. The Custom Steel Guard radial, only from Goodyear. The cost of carrying the things you need is always a part of the price you pay. So for Burlington Northern to carry coal to Chicago, or cornflakes to Denver, or freezers to Seattle cheaply, we have to be a modern, efficient railroad network. That helps hold shipping costs in line and helps hold down your prices. Burlington Northern, from the Great Lakes to the Pacific, from Canada to the Gulf, the better we get, the better it is for you. Redskins, first and ten from their own 39. No score. Filmer, Jefferson, out of bounds at the 41. Most teams that have been successful against the Vikings this year have thrown a lot on first down. Uh, they try to avoid those uh, second and eight, second nine situations. And uh, off play action and uh, your short outs and those kind of patterns, really good call uh, against a uh, Minnesota defense. Second and four for the Redskins. Ball at the 46. So it's second and four. Second and three. About a half a yard on that play, Haraway. Ella and Seaman on the tackle. Third and three now from the 47 yard line. Third and three for the Redskins. Jefferson out to the left, Taylor to the right. Taylor, the first down, and no, the ball stolen away by Wick, by Seaman. And the Vikings come up with the first turnover of the game. Wayne, it's like you were saying before, the defense is going to play the large parts and opportunistic. You see Charlie Taylor running a quick post here, and here comes those linebackers. Jeff Seaman, they knocked it loose. Well, it was a good hit by number 43, Nate Wright, from behind. It really popped the ball out of there. Seaman on his drop came over and picked it out of midair, and that's the break that Minnesota's been looking for right there. Can't make any mistakes against these Vikings. On the Redskin, 43, first and 10. Again, Darrell Dale in motion. Again, the fake goes to Foreman. The short one back here to Gilliam, and it is really broken up. Mike Bass coming in as the Redskins were ready. Mike Bass made a fine play that time. Now, that's just a, a split end or a flanker back screen. And actually, Gilliam should have taken about two or three steps downfield into his pattern and came back for the ball. But he really didn't make a definite move downfield. And he didn't sell it to Mike Bass at all. It was really waiting right there for him. 
Wayne, I think one of the things that the players in, in situations like this, when you get in the playoff games, one of the things they'll do is maybe hurry their motions a little bit, and I think that's what John did on the last play. Second and ten. Foreman. Maybe to the 41-yard line. Myron Pontiac, or number 86, Berlin Biggs riding him there. That'll be third down and eight. Now we have Kenny Stone, the safety, in uh, replacing Myron Patios, the middle linebacker. That means now that the five defensive backs in the ball game for Washington. They play this defense, I think, better than anybody, Tommy. I think they do, Wayne. They work the heck out of it. loose but Tarkenton picks it up and he is well back to the 46 yard line good coverage by the Redskins defense on that play we talked about uh, how well they played what they call their nickel defense with five defensive backs and uh, you know with a lot of teams it's a second thought uh, they use it as a prevent defense but with the Redskins believe it or not it is their most second frequent defense so they work at it a lot in practice and they've played it a lot in ball games. When I think they run more variations off of that nickel than most people do, that most people put in just for prevent. They'll run all types of zones off of it and man to man everything. Beatty Duncan and Herb Mulkey are down at their own 10 yard line. Ice shot to kick for Minnesota. Four yard line, Mulkey, and he is dropped inside the 15. Good coverage there by the Vikings. And the Redskins start on their own 14-yard line. So it's starting out to be that defensive game we thought it might be. Seven minutes and 42 seconds left here in this first period. No score. Ford says its mid-size Ford Torino is a great value for today's driving. Hello, I'm Hugh Downs. You can find out for yourself by comparing Torino to other mid-sized cars. Front seat passengers should be able to cross their legs. Check the quality. The carpeting should be thick. Feel the seats. They should be firm from center to edge. Test the back for leg room, knee room, hip room. Is the ride smooth, solid, and steady? Ford believes this car meets these tests. And this Gran Torino Brougham carries six passengers comfortably has steel-belted radial ply tires standard, runs on regular gas with a big 26 and a half gallon tank. A great car for today's driving. And not a bad idea for carpools, either. Others tell you to compare. Ford and your Ford dealers tell you what to compare. Ford Torino. The closer you look, the better we look. Redskins from their own 14-yard line. Billy Kilmer. Action for Taylor. Paul Krause stepping it off. Pretty good throw by Billy that time, but I really think he might have made a judgment error because he threw right into the Minnesota zone. Nate Wright was uh, rotated up and uh, he made the bump on Charlie Taylor, and then Paul Krause had the deep outside and he was there. Well, we have two bowl games coming up here on CBS next Saturday Missouri against Auburn. In the Sun Bowl. That should be a good one. I think that that second one we're going to have on New Year's Day, the Cotton Bowl between Texas and uh, Nebraska should be a dandy also. Right here on CBS. Redskins now second and 10 from their own 14. Pitch out to Larry Brown. Well, he got two nice blocks there. Arita had a lot of loss on that play. Jackie does a good job of getting the ball right here. Billy tosses a little out in front of him, and Larry keeps his eye on it. The one thing you have to be careful, something like that, is you do watch the ball right into your hands. So many times it would be a good toss, and it hit a fellow right in the hands and drop it, but you got it going on that one. So on third and seven, Lertzema comes in, and Larson goes out in that front four for Minnesota. Third 
Jefferson to the right, Taylor to the left. Larry Brown across the 25. And a first down for the Redskins. Off tackle play by Larry on this one makes a nice cut there. Pulls away from a tackle by Eller. Now this is the type of running Larry just does his best. He gets in the crowd, he bows his neck, puts his head down, and gets as many yards as he can. This is the type of ball control offense that the Redskins like to do. And if they're going to, as we mentioned before, if they can keep their running game going like this, they'll be in good shape. Second first down for the Redskins. They're at their own 27. Larry Brown. A hole was there, but it was plugged up immediately by Winston. Really a good defensive play by number 60, Roy Winston, as he stepped in the hole and took on the guard, number 73, Paul Lavick, and still made the tackle. He's been around a long time, and uh, I think I have a lot of respect for him as a linebacker. He has uh, good ability, and uh, I think probably his strongest asset is his ability to stay on his feet at all times. About a half a yard on that, so it's second and a long nine now. This no is a situ excuse me, Jack. This is a situation that uh, Washington wanted to avoid. A second nine, a, a long yardage situation. Larry Brown, and again, Brown gets the first down. Hey, we got sort of a cross action here. Charlie comes up the middle and is going for the linebacker. Larry comes around, nothing real fancy about it, but you don't really find fancy runs in the, the Redskins defense. They don't do any of the flea flickers or anything like that, although they're capable of it. Hard running. I think this, if their offensive line has a good day, as it looks like they're going to have, well, should be okay. First down from the 39. Jefferson down the sidelines. Finally bumped out. At the 31-yard line of Minnesota, Nate Wright forced him out. Well, only bad things can happen when uh, you lose containment on the quarterback. That time, uh, Billy just half rolled out to the right, and uh, Eller couldn't keep containment on him. Billy got a second look at the defense and really threw a nice pass. It's really a strike, a nice soft touch on him. Well, you talk about your quarterbacks around the league to throw from the run, but I don't know if many people realize that in college, Billy Cummer was a UCLA single-wing tailback, and he throws as well from the run as just about anybody. He's a... Deepest, quarterback. deepest penetration now. Viking 30, first and 10. Larry Brown cutting back in, getting maybe to the 26 yard line. Carl Eller. And Gary Larson on the stop. Tommy, that veer action that uh, the Redskins run, I know you were there last year. Uh, they start their eye formation with the back lined up about six yards deep in the backfield. It makes it easier for them to veer. certainly does, Wayne. And one of the things they like to do is when they hand the ball off to the tailback, they want his shoulders parallel with the line of scrimmage. This enables him to cut back if the pursuit is already going in that direction. Second and six from the 26. Away. Charlie gets it down to the 21, close to a first down. Seaman Jeff on Seaman, the... you bet. Uh, Bud Grant calls him uh, the best middle linebacker in the league right now against the run. Let's watch him. He had a blitz on that time as he took on number 87, Jerry Smith. The weak side linebacker, Wally Hilgenberg, also blitzed, and uh, it was Seaman that pulled down Haraway. Two tight ends in now for Washington on this third and one. We talked about the overshifted defense to shut down that middle running. That was the first time that the Vikings have been in an odd man line, and uh, it looked like it may. Well, it is the first down, but they they played it tough in the middle that time, and that's the first time we've seen an odd man line from them. You know, from an offensive standpoint, if you can get that offensive line coming off the ball, when you get third and one, if you can get any kind of movement at all out of the defense, it's pretty hard not to make the first down. 
and uh, they came off real well. That was what they call a 25 in hunch in Redskin terminology, which won't mean a lot to anybody but me, I'm sure. <laughs> Redskins moving nicely here. This is the 10th play of this drive. This is 10 at the Viking 20. The Taylor, he's got it. Out of bounds, they say, at the 12. That went off Bobby Bryant. Jack, if uh, Billy Kilmer lost anything in the hospital, he doesn't look like <laughs> it so far. He's doing a great job of mixing his plays up. And there's, uh, I don't think you can throw a pass any better than he did on that one. He put it right on the outside shoulder. If the, if the defender was going to make any kind of a move at all, it had to be through the through Charlie Taylor. And he's throwing to a great receiver in Charlie Taylor also. And about the only thing that might affect Bill today would be fatigue. Right. Uh, in the latter part of the game, it may become a, a factor. Second and two at the 12. following Haraway, getting across the 10-yard line and very close to another first down. Yes, it is. First and goal now for the Redskins. Wayne, I want to ask you, what is it that makes a, a defense that much meaner when you get inside the 10? You know, they let you run around in between the 30s and everything, but once you get around the goal line, everybody gets kind of nasty down there. You know, tell me, uh, really, when you talk about it, most offensive teams have a tendency to tighten up their, their splits in the line, and it just jams the defense in there. First and goal from the nine, the 12th play of this series. Bobby Brown this time stopped dead in his tracks at about the 10. Seaman and Larson. Number 88, Alan Page, Alan was in Page. there really quick that time. And once again, uh, really for the second straight time now, uh, Jeff Seaman, who blitzed from middle linebacker, he's working on a stunt with Page. He sent Page to the outside. and. He came up looking through the middle that time, and it was Page that hit the play. Page almost took the handoff. <laughs> quick. That is quick, isn't it? Second and goal from the 10. Taylor and Jefferson out to the left. Almost then intercepted by Krauss. Intended for Larry Brown over the middle. Billy might really have pulled the string on that pass because I think just as he was going to release it, he saw Larry Brown slip and fall down there about the five yard line. So Billy might have been trying to hang on to that ball a little bit longer. Although we're all having good weather, the, the field is a little bit hard around the edges and down near the goal lines. And I don't know if it was wet or what, but as you mentioned, Wayne, Larry did lose his footing on the play. Oh, from the 10. <laughs> Harry Smith, the intended receiver, surrounded down there by two Vikings, two rights, I believe, which didn't make a wrong there. <laughs> I tell you what, that was a great job of, of uh, blocking up front by... Uh, the Redskin offensive line. Billy had all kinds of time that time, but uh, Jerry Smith couldn't come open in the end zone as he was double covered over on the right side. So this drive, it's now gone to its 15th play. It's fourth down as Washington now will go for three. And Kurt Knight will be the kicker. He's had some problems lately. Uh, one time during the year, he kicked 10 in a row, but uh, he's, I think he's 20 for 42 for the season, so he hasn't been too consistent. From the 17, Jerkinson holding. Kurt Knight has missed it from 17. And Washington comes up empty here. With one minute and 50 seconds left, there's still no score. You know, when we first got married, we spent more money on camping equipment than we did on furnishing our apartment. Yeah. But we won't live like this forever. That's why we opened a savings account at a savings and loan. We picked a savings and loan because we found that they finance most of the homes in the country. When we find the house we want, our savings will be our down payment. Well, we figure, why not start out with people who can help us get all the way home? Right. Your savings and loan wants you to know how money works. Now comes Miller time. You've made the last climb of the day. And now it's time to head for the best tasting beer you can find. <laughs> 
Miller High Life, America's quality beer since 1855. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. Miller Beer. If you've got the time, we've got No score here with a minute and 50 left in this first period as Minnesota takes over. First and 10 from their own 20. Gets it out to about the 22 and a half yard line. Carl Eller on the Minnesota bench. They had kind of a long and long stay in there the last time, Jack. I think the, the drive of the Redskins came from the 14 and they had a 15 play drive, which is really unusual against that Minnesota defense. They do get tough inside that 20 yard oh, line. Second and eight. Gilliam to the left. Dale to the right. Good pressure there by the Washington defense. Well, Francis, as you see there, number 10, tried to fool uh, the Washington left linebacker, Dave Robinson, that time by bringing Oscar Reed all the way across the formation on his screen. But Robbie's been around a long time. He saw him sneaking through, and he was right up there in the middle of it. Well, in two weeks, CBS will resume its NBA television broadcast Sunday, January 6th. The Phoenix Suns are going to take on the Chicago Bulls that day, Jack, and you know you have athletes out here but there are some really big men to play that round ball game also you'll see NBA every Sunday afternoon and some Saturday afternoons here on CBS Vikings third and eight now from the road 22 <laughs> Ron Yarry busted off sides this will be the first flag of the game There's a little strategy going on yeah, down there right now. Yeah, Normally in this situation, the third and seven sure passing situation, you'd see Myron Patios, number 66, come out and the fifth defensive back uh, come into the ball game. But uh, as of right now, Moe is still in there. We'll see if this penalty takes uh, the Vikings back whether George Allen will change his mind over there. And he does. I think you're a mind reader, <laughs> Wayne. <laughs> and 20, Kenny Stone comes in for Moe now. So he's got a heck of a number, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> you like it, huh? I like that. It was good to me for 12 years. <laughs> Third and 13. Hey, Myron Patios. Right. Third and 13 for the Vikings at their 17. Third and 13 against the nickel defense. <laughs> Steve White, the intended receiver, but Pat Fisher and Kenny Houston uh, sandwiched them. Didn't look like it was a good pattern, Tommy. It looked like uh, he ran his turn uh, too close to the sideline out there where uh, the two defensive backs were rolled up into their zone as they were doubling the outside receiver. Right, well, you know, as you know, one of the things from an offensive standpoint, one of the things you have to do as you come down feel is feel. If you can't see, you, you have to feel where those defenders are, and you make your turn away from them. If you can, try to get your body between uh, them and the football. Third punt for the Vikings now. I should set him 43 and 42. He'd like to get a big one here. Mulkey and Duncan are back in their own 45. Speedy Duncan hit immediately and dropped at the 43. First man down there was number 43, Nate Wright. Duncan on the return. Tackled by Well, the defense is having it in this first period. First and, ten for the first and ten. The Redskins now from their 43. Barry Brown cutting back beautifully into Minnesota territory at the 43. Tremendous pursuit by Carl Eller on the play. In fact, uh, Carl made the uh, made Larry make the cut. Just a quick toss to Larry out here. You see Charlie Haraway coming out. Makes his cut there behind. Carl Eller and heads on upfield. Now, this is good balance. One of the great things that Larry has is balance. He's taking a heck of a beating. He's earning every yard he gets there. They got him listed at 195. You mentioned that earlier, Tommy, but I'll tell you from the waist down, he's built like about a 210, 215 pounder. <laughs> Seventh first down for the Redskins. That's the territory again at the 44. Yeah. 
Haraway. Trying to go off the left side. Well, we talked earlier about Jeff Seaman, and uh, I'll tell you what, he either read that really well or had a little stunt going again. Watch his first step right to the right. He'll step in and really take on along with Alan Page there. Good play. Well, that's the end of the first quarter with the score, Washington nothing and Minnesota nothing. To the equitable agent, no two people are alike. Is there anyone else in the whole human race with your kind of style and your kind of grace? No two people are alike. That's why your equitable agent thinks of you as an individual. His training and thinking are shaped around you and your life insurance needs. To the equitable agent... There's nobody else exactly like you. If you were thinking about replacing the tires on your American car, remember this. Of all the steel-belted radial tires, only one is offered as original equipment by all four major automakers. The Goodyear Steel Guard Radial, with these five guards to help protect you five ways. The Steel Guard Radial, only from Goodyear. Charlie Sanders feels deeply enough about children to serve as a co-chairman of the March of Dimes in Detroit and to help promote research into birth defects and other disabling illnesses. There's a need all over this country for people willing to help people. If you can type, drive, or make phone calls, call your local Voluntary Action Center or write Volunteer, Washington, D.C., 20013. What we need, money can't buy. We need you. Preceding announcement was brought to you as a public service by the National Football League. Tommy Mason, Wayne Walker, and Jack Whitaker here at Metropolitan Stadium as we begin the second period. The Redskins, second and 11 from the Viking 44. No score. Larry Brown with a 41. Three yards there, so it'll be third and long. The Vikings, 12 yards offense in that first quarter. The Skins. 126. That's kind of a turnabout from what we expected. You know, the Redskins' uh, offense this year has been sort of sporadic, but they had a fine drive there. And uh, Francis Tarkenham, even though this is not his best year statistically, I think he's playing the best ball of his career and has moved in very well. Third and nine. Complete. Roy Winston on Larry Brown. So it is fourth down now at the 42 yard line. Zach, maybe they figure if uh, Kurt Knight can't make it at 17, 17. he can make it at, uh, what, 47 almost. <laughs> or wherever it's going to be. 49, I think. He has already missed one from 17 yards. Jergensen to hold it at the 49. And it's short. Touchback, and the Vikings take over at their own 20. Once again, Kurt Knight, 22 out of 42 now. And uh, as we mentioned earlier, he made, he made 10 in a row at one time during the season. So he's really fallen on hard times lately. Well, the Vikings now, who haven't been able to get any kind of offense going, start now from their own 20. And the Redskins still playing tough. Oscar Reed runs into Biggs and it's a loss of two yards back to the 18. Osborne in there with Reed in the backfield now. Well, Verlin Biggs and Chris Hanberger over on that right side make a, a real tough team to run at, I'll guarantee you. And we're going to see some of Chris Hanberger at halftime in our NFL playbook feature. And he's been one of the best blitzers in the league for many years, and that's what he's going to talk about at halftime. And he'll even uh, go over the safety blitz with it. The NFL playbook at halftime. 
second and 12. For Reed, near the 15 yard line. Followed very closely there by Dave Robinson. Robinson and Fisher on the tackle. Fisher shaken up on the play. And Pat Fisher has been shaken up on the play. Tough little man. That's remarkable. I tell you, Jack, he's about uh, 5'10", and weighs about 175 pounds, and you might guess he would be any number of things except a football player. It's amazing. This is his 13th year in the league. Oh, Fisher shaking up here. It is third down and six now for the Vikings at their own 24-yard line. No score. Ring in the holidays. Ring out the year. Sparkling with Andre. Love and good cheer. Take Andre home for the holidays. Andre for the holidays. What's a celebration without Andre champagne to lend sparkle and elegance? And Andre cold duck to keep things bubbling along. Greet the season and your friends with the best. Andre. For the holidays and all year long. First, he gets a new car. And I get the old one. Then he leaves his car in the garage. And mine sits outside. And now, I have to give him a start. I don't know what I'd like to give him. What, dear? A diehard of your very own. Dear? The Sears diehard. Ask the woman who owns one. So lonely at Sears. Here's the play on which Pat Fisher got hurt on. Can't uh, tell really now. Watch number 89, Robbie, coming over on the tackle. And it really may have been Robbie right here that falls on Pat. And uh, you bet he does right there. And it, uh, I don't want to diagnose or anything, but it uh, looks like it probably could have been a rib injury. Now he's up. Got the two Redskin trainers in the Redskin team position, Pat Palumbo, out there taking care of him. Speedy Duncan comes in to take Pat Next Fisher's day, place at left exchange. cornerback. Doctor number six call the medical exchange. Third and six for the Vikings from their own 24. Third and five for the Vikings at their 25. William goes to the left, Carol Dale down to the right. slowed him up. Robinson fell on him. First down. Really a good call this time by Francis. And the reason it worked, watch the draw play work. Watch the big upfield rush by number 86, Berlin Fix. And it was easy for Grady Alderman to kick out on him and left really a large hole for Mo Patios, number 66, to come over and fill. I think that's a new play in the Viking repertoire. I haven't seen him run that this year, and it uh, looks like it might have been put in to take advantage of that pressure that you were talking about, Wayne. First first down for the Vikings in the game at their own 33. This is Baranaro. Maybe to the 35. Dyron Talbert getting up last there. Getting a little chilly here now as the sun <laughs> has gone behind some clouds. You know, this time of the year, Jack, you could almost call this a uh, Minnesota Second summer. Yeah. The <laughs> Second and seven on the 36-yard line. Collected by Dyron Talbert. Redskins playing as they have all year so well on defense here. A puzzlement to Fran Tarkenton. Well, it takes a while. When you run up against the George Allen defense, I'm sure that it gives any quarterback problems. You know, most of the defensive notebooks in the league, I guess, are, are a little on the slim side as compared to the offense. But when you go to the Redskins, the, they carry two notebooks. Yeah. You know, they can't get it all in one. <laughs> Vikings at their 36. 
Nickel defense for Washington on third and seven for the Vikings. He's got Reed wide open. The 14 yard line as Blackington beat the five defensive back defense. And he beat it working on a linebacker, number 89, Dave Robinson. They, they doubled both the outside receivers and really turned the first back here over to Robbie. Reed beats him by a step or two, and Tarkenton has the ball for him perfectly. Very nice pass by Francis. Like you mentioned, you always like to get the, those linebackers one-on-one -on -one with the back, and Francis has always did that at the first years and made a history of it, and he was smart enough to take advantage of it on that play. Biggest play of the day for the Vikings so far. They have a first and 10 at the Redskins 14. Reed and Marinaro, the backs. Oscar Reed. Guard or two. Byron Talbert on the stop. Ball at the 12. Well, on Sunday, January 20th, the CBS Sports Spectacular returns with a diversified schedule of events. The first two weeks, 25 of the greatest heavyweight championship fights in history. Tommy says he's too young to remember most of those <laughs> fights, but uh, I'm looking forward to seeing Dempsey and Willard again. You remember that one, don't you? <laughs> right. That's how it's starting off right here on CBS on January 20th. For Gilliam, and I don't know whether that was the best part of Valor because... Mike Bass was right there. Good coverage on the play. Good coverage and a lot of pressure by number 72, Dyron Talbert, who was right in Francis's face as uh, he unloaded that ball, and uh, he really had to throw it over Talbert. Threw it away. Pat Fisher injured his rib cage. May return is the word we get. Mm. One thing, I think the longer he stays out, the harder time he's going to have returning, Jack. You know, on a cold day like today, when the muscles get stiff and everything, it's very, very difficult to get the circulation going again. Third down and eight for Tarkenton. And a situation where he likes to slip backs out of the backfield. Brundage chasing him. Gets away from one. Talbert goes and misses. Tarkenton throwing. Well, incomplete. Good job by everybody on the Washington defense that time. Now, Francis got outside, but everybody picked up a man and really stayed with him. Uh, we had linebackers covering the backs out of there, and Nobody was really open. He never really had anybody to throw to that time, and that's the toughest part with a scrambling quarterback. You just have to find somebody in your zone and clamp them because you never know when the guy might stop and come to him. The Skins did it well that time. Fred Cox, 21 for 34 this year. Krause to hold at the 19. Our first score of the game, Minnesota drawing first blood. 19-yard field goal by Fred Cox has put the Vikings out in front. With 10 minutes and 16 seconds left to play in the second period, Minnesota 3, Washington nothing. Fred Lipscomb makes a career out of helping people in Juneau, Alaska. When your car is insured by State Farm Mutual, he's one of 11,000 State Farm agents everywhere who provide prompt, personal service. If you live in Juneau and run into trouble, he can help you. If you run into trouble somewhere else, just check the yellow pages. Just like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Ever stay at a hotel you thought was convenient, only to find out your business is way across town? Well, Holiday Inn gives you a choice of locations in every major city. Just look at the time another holiday in. And as every businessman knows, that can really pay off. You're late. What kept you? Oh, the traffic was murder. Should have stayed at the Holiday Inn. Get closer to your business with Holiday Inn, the most accommodating people in the world. Gordon McRae and Shirley Jones co-star in the classic Rodgers and Hammerstein musical Oklahoma. Don't miss this special presentation Thursday night at 9, 8 central time. Herb Mulkey on his goal line, awaiting the kickoff from Fred Cox, who has just put the Vikings in the lead here, three to nothing, with 10 minutes left to play in the second period. Oh, splendid kick at the 15. 
and out to the 31 yard line. Mulkey. No, well, it's good field position, but for a while there, it looked like that might be a very good kickoff for the Vikings. Fred's really good at that. Uh, he probably the best in the league uh, as a kickoff man is uh, moving the ball around. He can put it in either corner on you, and he wanted to keep it away from number 28, Mulkey. The Redskins from the 31. Haraway and Brown. Taylor to the right, Jefferson to the left, Kilmer quarterback. Jefferson Bryant pushes him out of bounds at the 34 yard line three yards Jack to line up in a double wing uh, formation on that play and uh, Bobby Bryant is the defender over this pass and he led the NFL in interceptions this year with seven and looked like he reacted pretty quick Billy has a history of liking those short outs and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, those cornerbacks are going to gamble one of these times and try to pick one off just wait and wait and wait hmm? well the right minute right right moment yeah. hope and hope you don't miss yeah <laughs> Second and seven for the Redskins at the 34. Second and seven. Larry Brown. With a 37-yard line. George, George Allen. You know, you, Jack, you watch George, and you watch him stroke his chin and straighten his cap, and he looks... He has these mannerisms during a game, and he looks like a baseball coach sending a signal down to, <laughs> to the batter. He's not a bit nervous, though, is he, Tommy? <laughs> <laughs> nope. Third down and four. Quick one to the other side, and there was Nate Wright doing, I think, just what we were talking about a moment ago. Yeah, I don't, I don't think he was gambling for the interception as much. He was just trying to break it up. But he did a good job on it. The ball was thrown just a little on the high side. Roy really doesn't drive him downfield that much. And, well, it hit him in the hands. But uh, Wright made a good play on it. Number 20, Bob Wright is deep for the Vikings. Number four, Mike Bryan, the Redskins punter. Bryan, deep for Minnesota. Bryan, second punt of the afternoon. I don't know how he missed it, Jack. Well, it was Wally Hilgenberg, number 58, who busted up the middle. And if, uh, if he missed it entirely, I don't know how he could have, like Tommy said. He may have gotten just may a little bit of it. Because the kick wasn't yeah. that good. It's at the 37-yard line, 36-and-a-half yard line of Minnesota. Well, one of the things the Redskins have done better than, I think, anybody else in the league is special teams. And uh, that's really uh, out of character for them. They usually protect their punter and their kicker very well. Oscar Reed. Maybe two yards. Now Chris Hamburger we talked about earlier. Now watch him use his finesse here. He's not too big, 210, 215. He moves around, stays active, and watch him step in and take Oscar Reed on, and we... We talked earlier that he'll be featured at halftime on the NFL playbook, and he'll talk about blitzing from the linebacker position. Second and nine for the Vikings at their Second and eight from the 38-yard line. Foreman and Reed, the backs. Matt Fisher is back in the ball game. There's Chuck Foreman. And the rookie gets nowhere. Rundage on top, number 77, and Patios in the bottom. You know, I think one of the defensive linemen on the Redskins is had probably the most consistent year is Bill Brundage, number 77, who we're seeing here. And it looks like they've got the foreman scattered so well because Bill didn't even try any penetration. He just came right down the line and seemed to know, ex know exactly where the play was going. Well, they play a wonderful team defense and uh, never really break down individually. They have good pursuit and they move across just like pickets on a fence and you really have nowhere to go on them running in the middle. Third and seven. to the first down. He needed to get to the about the 46 and a half yard line. Actually, he was the second choice on the play. You see him swinging out the second back out. A lot of times, 
and the receivers are covered, you get those fellas free, and a, an experienced quarterback like Francis can do it. Now, he does a real good thing there. He knows where that first down is, and he knows how much he has to get, and he puts his head down and gets after it. They're going to measure Chris Hamburger and Aaron Talbert over there for Washington. You know, talking earlier to uh, some of the Minnesota people that uh, involved with their offense, they felt that because the linebackers, number 55 and uh, Hamburger and number 89, Dave Robinson on the outside, get such good drops that they might be able to throw under them on those kind of fast patterns today. It worked that time, but short of the first down. Short of the first down, and Minnesota apparently is going to punt. They lead 3 nothing here with 7 minutes and 40 seconds left in the second period. Speedy Duncan. Pat Fisher back in action. I tell you, if he looks like a football player, <laughs> he's done a great job. For Mike Eishai to punt. He's averaged 42 yards on three punts today. Great coverage here, and Duncan goes nowhere. Got down at the 19. Boy, there was a purple blanket coming down there. Well, tomorrow, of course, we have the Los Angeles Rams against the Dallas Cowboys in a big one. It's going to be a big one, Jack, at Dallas, and it's going to be on their home field. They're coming the last part of the year. As you know, the Rams whipped them early in the season with a tremendous performance by Harold Jackson. Who are you picking, Tommy? Oh, geez, I'm going to flip the coin. <laughs> Dallas has got a lot of momentum going in, but the Rams have had a fantastic year. So got out of that pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to stick my neck out? <laughs> but Grant and Fran Tarkington look on now as the Redskins take it just inside their 20. Haraway. To the 21. On the to the 22, they say. Second and eight. Kilmer's five for 10, 59 yards Second passing. The there, Larry Brown has 59 yards and 14 carries. There's a flag down. Pass interference against the Minnesota Vikings. And they call it on number 23, Jeff Wright. And uh, I'm really not sure, but now this might be a unique penalty because they could have called him over there for face guarding. I know there was some contact made, but the ball might not have been in the air. But as he turned around, he may have been face guarding over there. Wayne, I think he was trying to cover Jerry Smith on the play, and they initially had what they what the Redskins call a straight with a where the uh, tight end goes out about a two-yard deep pattern, three-yard deep pattern out in the flat, and uh, Billy couldn't get it to him, and Jerry just turns up field, as experienced receivers will do. And I think uh, Wright was a little bit behind him and uh, was just kind of hanging on and gave him a little extra shove while the ball was in the air, and that's a no-no. First and 10 at the 26 for the Redskins. Larry Brown. 29, and it looked like he was stopped at the 27. The second and seven. Three to nothing. Minnesota leading Washington here with six minutes left in the second period. Second and seven. Taylor left, Brown in the slot to the left. Haraway for a first down up at the 37-yard line. You know, Jack, uh, Charlie Haraway gets left out sometimes in the mention of the backfield, but you see he's proved his worth through the years, and he's makes a tremendous run right here. Good blocking by John Wilbur and Lynn Haas on the play. I tell you, that offensive line of the Redskins is just doing a tremendous job. When you run up against a defense like the Vikings have and you can move the ball as well as they've moved it, even when you have great backs like you do, 
doing a tremendous job up front. This time, the Viking defense is there, and they drop Brown back at the 30. It's right. Winston, great penetration that time. That'll be second and 17 from the 30-yard line. Well, the defense is supposed to bend but not break. Is that it? what they're Let doing them. today. Yeah, that's exactly right. They're making drives, but they haven't scored on it. Oh, uh, Second and 17 for the Redskins. Pitch out to Larry Brown. Giving him outside. Bryant misses the shot. And Brown takes it all the way to the 36. Two things I'd like to point out in that run right there. And Jim Marshall did a fine job of... Uh, taking down the interference, watching with Haraway and with the tackle right here. He forces it back. Now, watch this hurdle by Larry Brown. Tell me I thought the hurdling in the open field was illegal. <laughs> Never if you do it as an offensive player, Wayne. <laughs> it is. It's supposed to be a, you know, they got Joe Cap here a few uh, years ago, was a quarterback, and that was almost his trademark. When he'd get out running the football, you know, he'd jump over the defenders, and it was a, a seldom used rule. And I think that uh, George Allen uh, dug it up when we played him and, the, and uh, were beat by them. And uh, consequently, you see more people calling it nowadays. But it is supposed to be a, uh, an infraction. Third and 11. Lertzema in for Larson in the line for Minnesota. Go to Haraway. Just short of the first down as Haraway gets it to the 45-yard line. Carl Eller. So the Viking defense contains again. Billy Kilmer saying we almost had it. He's doing a good job of mixing his plays up. You know, he's I think he's trying to keep the defense off balance and you get in the passing situations like he just had then. He's running the draws and and I guess that's as good a way as any to attack this Minnesota defense since they have so many strong personnel over there. Mike Bragg, the punt. Brian is deep and West shallow. Redskins football at the 20-yard line. And again, the special teams of the Redskins, the opportunists, cash in. Jack, the last time these two teams met, I think the difference, or one of the big differences was in the special teams. Now, you see Bobby Bryant comes over and tries to handle it, but can't hang on to it. And I would, <laughs> and you see somebody there kissing him hello as he comes down the field. Redskins have good coverage on that play. They probably spend more time on special teams than any other team in the league. And it pays off for them. Bob Brune covered the ball. The Redskins at the Viking 21. Larry Brown, Alan Page on top of him. Maybe a yard. Alan Page is just amazing with his quickness. You know, so many teams will, will run at him because uh, they feel that it's it turns his pursuit into a negative factor. Now watch him pursue on this play. As he plays off the guard by uh, Lavig, watch him come over on Larry Brown. Look at the speech for that big guy, number 88. Mm -hmm. You're better off running at him. You really are. I think he's probably as quick a defensive tackle as I've ever seen, Wayne. Second and nine from the 20. Taylor to the right, Jefferson to the left. Yes, sir, Charlie Taylor inside the five at the three. Paul Kraus on the tackle. And him wide open on the play. It's just a quick slant. Billy rolls out slightly to his right, starts looking for Charlie. And he's all by himself there, hanging on the football. You notice he put two hands around it there. I'm sure he remembers coughing it up a while ago, but he makes a great play there, gets him down inside the five, and now they're going really good stuff. First and goal from the three. Larry Brown, touchdown! Larry 
really the Redskins' favorite play right here in a short yardage situation. Just straight ahead fire with Charlie Haraway leading Larry Brown. He gets a good block at the point. This guy right here can cut it in and veer it in the end zone. So the Redskins, their special team getting the football, cashing in with the first touchdown of the game. They take the lead. Third night now for the point after. Yes, sir. This one is right through. And so the Redskins, with two minutes left to play here in the first half, have taken the lead 7-3 to three over the Minnesota Vikings. Here she is, the finest you can buy. How do I know? I made them by hand. Took me 12 days. For you, a bargain at 80 bucks. Now here we got the opposition. Pair of double knits at 20 bucks. Their secret, a great fit. And I hate to admit it, a lot of pant for the money. What am I wearing? You've got to be kidding. I know a great buy when I see one. Fair of slacks, 10 to $30. Next best thing to tailor-made. Maybe better. That date with Janie. Your first big interview. The class reunion. Funny, seems like those times when you really wanted a good close shave. Your old double-edged razor gave you a nick or cut. We understand. That's why we made the Wilkinson Bonded. An edge of incredible keenness is locked in a unique protective shaving head. The Bonded blade shaves you closer. The head helps protect you from nicks and cuts. The Wilkinson Bonded. A closer shave doesn't have to hurt. Washington 7, Minnesota 3. We have two minutes left. Gilliam and West now are deep as we look at George Allen, who feels a little bit better now than he did several minutes ago. There's West, number 40, and Gilliam, 42, to his left. Kurt Knight. The kickoff. West, the two. Good block. Turns the corner, gets it up across the 25, out at the 27-yard line. Good return by Charlie West. You know, he was signed a Major League Baseball contract before he was ever a rookie here, Jack, and went to camp, and I guess just didn't really have quite enough for the Major Leagues right off and, and came on and reported to the Vikings and figured that he would rather play Major League football than wait a while and play Major League Baseball. Parkinson has one minute and 53 seconds left in the half from his own 27. Yes, sir, it is good. Out of bounds up at the 42-yard line. P.D. Duncan for the defense. Carol Dale on the reception. Tell you what really makes that play go, and that's really a half sprint out action by Francis. And the key to the whole play is the block that Ron Yeri makes on the defensive end. And he did a good job one-on-one -on -one that time on McDowell, which enabled Tarkin to get outside. See a young fellow there that's been having a heck of an afternoon, Larry Brown. He needs every bit of rest he can get right now. Got 65 yards and a touchdown already. There's Oscar Reed. Might have lost a yard. Berlin Biggs on the stop. You know, Jack, you mentioned the Larrys had 65 yards, and the Vikings are going without a huddle here. Looks like they're trying to catch the Redskins. Uh, that's the foreman. He's covered immediately at the 44-yard line. That's a pretty old defensive team to be trying to fool, Tommy. Yeah, those guys, <laughs> most of them have been around the lake quite a while. Well, the clock, he stopped here with one minute and 19 seconds remaining in the second quarter. There's timeout with the score, Washington 7, Minnesota 3. 1933. 1973, 40 years of progress in cars and carburetors. There's a lot more to carburetors today, and they're a lot harder to keep clean. No doubt about it either. A dirty carburetor can cause rough idling, poor mileage, and reduce power. That's why SPP gasoline treatment's more important than ever. It helps clean your carburetor, helps keep your engine in tune as you drive. Add a can of STP gas treatment. You'll really feel the difference. 
Not all radial tires are the same. Some of them have smooth riding polyester cord. Some have double steel belts. Some have a computerized tread to hold in the wet. Some have special cornering grooves. And some have steel stabilizers for handling. But only Goodyear has them all. The Goodyear Custom Steel Guard. The radial tire with all five guards to help protect you five ways. Steel Guard, only from Goodyear. One minute and 19 seconds left as Tarkenton comes back from his conference and Chris Hamburger comes back from his. And we remind you again, Chris Hamburger will be on at halftime with Playbook. Tell you all about linebackers and the blitz. They haven't had a use today. Yet. Not much. Not at all, I don't think. Third and eight. Jonathan Livingston that time. It looked like it might be picked <laughs> off, but it got the job done. I tell you what, there's Carol Dale, number 84, and uh, I think more than anything, he's, he probably runs his patterns with more intelligence than any receiver in the league. Now, that time he probably had a post pattern called. He ran down, made his move to the post, and saw that Washington was laying back there in his zone, so he just pulled up in between, and Francis got the ball to him. He's been a great one for a lot of years. One minute and 12 seconds left. A ball at the Redskin 40. Tommy, it's so important for those uh, receivers and backs to be able to read the defense themselves along with the quarterback as they come out of the backfield. Exactly. When you, when you get somebody like Carroll who's been around in 14 years, I think, you just it's like having a coach out there on the field. And, you know, George Allen always, uh, you know, he likes the experience, and that time it worked the other way for him. You know, you, the Vikings have their share of experience also. Vikings now have one timeout left. The Redskins have three. A minute and 12 seconds left. From the Redskin 40. Gilliam and Dale out to the left. Foreman on the right side. Foreman over the middle. Still on his feet. They're going to stop his progress at the 26. Clock is moving at one minute now. Timeout is called. With the clock at one minute. I think it's an official timeout. And here we see Foreman coming across the middle. He was a receiver at Miami. And Francis is calling the audible on the line of scrimmage right here, Jeff. On the 26. Now that'll stop the clock. 47 seconds. You know, Chuck Foreman is a tremendous running back. He's been a great asset for them their first years, giving them what they call a breakaway threat as a runner. But they also, uh, he also adds another dimension as a receiver. You know, if you can have a back coming out of that backfield that catches as well as he does with his background as a receiver at Miami, well, it puts a lot of pressure on the linebackers, Wayne. I think you'd be very familiar with something like that. I remember a guy that used to play for Minnesota. His number was 20. One year he <laughs> caught nine touchdown passes coming out of the backfield. Tommy? Well... You know, you got to make a living some way. <laughs> Try to stay away from you guys. Washington now into the five defensive back defense on second and ten from the 26, 47 seconds left. Gilliam, incomplete. Well, that's his second drop of the day, and you're not going to find him dropping too many passes. He's just been a super performer for the Vikings uh, since they got him from St. Louis. Number 42, John Gilliam. Wayne, interesting on the last situation. Looks like they had Speedy Duncan, who is not a normal defensive back, and they had him in single coverage on John Gilliam, which is kind of a dangerous situation, wouldn't you say? I'll tell you, Gilliam, uh, he was giving him plenty of room, though, Tommy. Uh, Gilliam, of course, uh, as you just saw on our screen, averaging about 21 yards a catch, so... I think you're safer playing him with a little cushion and Speedy was yeah. doing the intelligent <laughs> thing. Well, he got him shut out today. John hasn't caught one. Third and ten now. There's the Washington defense again. The interception by Bass. Still going. Still on his feet. Look out. Up at the 36-yard line, 26 seconds remaining. Mike Bass. 
tremendous return on that one. I tell you, he was playing the outside all the way. It was really kind of a, uh, I think that Francis expected Gilliam to turn out on that last play, and he couldn't really get out there, and he let it go. Mike Bass is one of those individuals that uh, really don't come up with a lot of publicity, and he's been really a good performer for the Redskins. Uh, he was originally a, a Vince Lombardi draft choice uh, with the Green Bay Packers, and then he came to Detroit. He was there for a year. The Redskins picked him up from us, and, uh, boy, he's been solid for them. How it turned around so quickly here. So instead of 7-6 or perhaps even 10-7 at halftime, it looks as if we're going to go in at 7-3 with the Redskins leading. 14 seconds, they're letting the clock go. You know, Jack, we've talked so much about momentum, and uh, this has got to send the Redskins in the halftime on an up note, which is, uh, didn't look like that way just a couple of seconds ago. There it is. That's the end of the first half with the score. Washington 7, Minnesota 3. In the second half, the Vikings came out charging on the legs of Oscar Reed, number 32. Oscar Reed had turned a third and two situation into a 46 yard gain to the Washington two yard line. In a replay from the end zone, we can more fully appreciate the work of the man whose slipperiness earned him the nickname of the sea and who for the game totaled 171 yards rushing and receiving. From the two, Tarkenton call on the old war horse, number 30, Bill Brown. Brown's touchdown put the Vikings ahead 10 to 7, and the Minnesota fans had a chance to warm themselves with the excitement of the moment. Billy Kilmer, who earlier in the week had been hospitalized with a stomach disorder, showed no signs of disability as he brought the Redskins right back, getting the ball to Larry Brown every chance he got. Larry Brown did not have a 100-yard rushing day this year until the final week of the regular season. But last week he made it two in a row as he ran 29 times for 115 yards against the rugged Minnesota defense. Watch number 58, Wally Hilgenberg, set up a drive stopper. And then watch the knee of number 31, Charlie Haraway, as he feels some pressure from Bobby Bryant. Twice when the Vikings had stopped third quarter drives, Kurt Knight, who earlier had missed badly, was called in to kick from 42 and 52. And again, Washington led 13 to 10. Trailing once more, Fran Tarkenton and John Gilliam took over the game. On a replay, we can see that Tarkenton faked to number 44, Chuck Foreman, and then found Gilliam floating free behind the Redskins' nickel defense. On the next play from scrimmage, Billy Kilmer tried to ignite another Redskin drive with a pass to Roy Jefferson. But lurking in the shadows was Viking cornerback Nate Wright, number 43.
Suddenly, the Vikings were within striking distance again, and one play later, Fran Tarkenden pulled a page from his earlier days in Minnesota. In a replay from the end zone, we can see the kind of pressure Fran Tarkenden can apply even to the most experienced defense in the league. For the day, John Gilliam caught only two passes, but both were for touchdowns within one minute's time. And suddenly the Vikings led 24-13. But just as suddenly following a block punt, Billy Kilmer passed to Roy Jefferson in the end zone, and again the lead was down to four at 24 to 20. In the replay, watch Billy Kilmer's pass protection, and then notice how closely Jefferson was covered by Nate Wright, number 43. In the waning seconds, Kilmer again had the Redskins knocking on the door. But on fourth down from the Viking 42, Kilmer threw incomplete. And the Viking victory was assured, as was apparent to two Vikings, both of whom were right, Nate and Jeff, that is. For the fans of the Minnesota Vikings, everything was once again right with the world. Or how better to keep warm through the Minnesota winter than by rooting for your favorite team and maybe following them to Texas, first to Dallas, and then perhaps to Houston for the big one, the one that got away in 1969.